I think we have a national crisis right now in this space. I had no, I did not write this for journalists. I did not write it about journalists. I did not write it about politics, although there are pol political examples in here. But we have careened to a place where we don't listen to one another anymore. We have careened to a place where assertion too often, in my view, eclipses genuine curiosity and engagement. We need to uh, encourage people to not fear a question that they can't answer right away, but view it as a challenge like we do in science. The media, um, I mean, I love the media, <laughs> I guess, uh, but I'm very worried about brandishing the media as the enemy of the American people. There is no way that the media, not is, but are, because what is commonly mistaken, the most fundamental mistake people make, is the media is some big singular object and we can just paint it all with one brush. I have several friends here who are at CNN with me at one time or another. We never had a conference call at 7.30 in the morning with every other media corporation in the country <laughs> to determine what that day's stories were gonna, story was going to be. Just didn't happen. Not only were we not the enemy of, of, of the people, we thought that everything we did in one form or another, every question we asked when responsible, and most everybody was, was to inform people, was to hold the powerful to account through accountability questions, confrontational questions sometimes. I try to take it out of a political realm to make this point. If the grocery store down the street is selling tainted beef, do you want to know or do you want to eat the beef and get sick? And if the butcher who works at the, at, in the meat department, whispers to a friend or a pal who he knows is a local reporter so that the word can get out because he's being told to put that beef out there so he can sell it another day. And by the way, this has happened. Do you want to know? Do you consider the butcher kind of a hero because even though he was told not to tell people, he put his job on the line to tell people so they wouldn't eat bad beef? And the answer is yes. And it's one of the reasons why not media, but our government passed whistleblower protections so that people who were inside who saw wrongdoing could bring it, leak it to the media so that we, the media, could inform people. I think media companies, news organizations in this country, need to go on a vast, concerted, two-pronged approach without sounding defensive or self-aggrandizing, which is very difficult to do. One, to be more transparent about how they make decisions and cover things so people understand it. And don't just say, oh, well, it's, you know, a leak or this or that or you're an enemy. But there's actually a process here. There's a thoughtful, dynamic debate that takes place. There are a lot of questions that are asked before a leak goes on the air. When I was bureau chief, I, many, any of you remember uh, Get Smart? Yeah, yeah Max Smart. So we had the, remember Maxwell Smart's Cone of Silence? Okay, so I had what I call when I was bureau the cone of silence. And if a reporter came to me, I don't know, Henry, if you knew this, but if a reporter came to me with a sourced piece of information and wanted to go on the air of it with it, we respected the reporter's anonymous sources. But if it was very sensitive, and we, f I felt I needed to know, we would step in the cone of silence, which was just my office, and I would say, okay, who's your source? You got to tell me. And we had a whole bunch of things that we did to try to make sure that the information we had was vetted, that the sources were solid, that we backstopped one another, that we had our own version of peer review where we tried or asked, could we be wrong about this? And we, weren't, we, we made mistakes, but it's not fake news to make a mistake as long as you correct it and hold people accountable for it. And that's the other thing that worries me is this notion of fake news, this term of fake news that's thrown around. Fake news is not news you don't like. Fake news is not even news that's sensational or unfair. That may be bad journalism, but it's not fake news. Fake news is malicious, deliberately wrong, planted information with a, with a bad intent. And I am, I am very worried, and I'm glad to have 
this platform and this book that, that makes the point that we need to be courageous in the questions that we ask. We need to embrace questions that make us uncomfortable and that hold other people to account. And we need, need to listen very, very carefully to what people have to say and what it means. And we have to stop. I, we have to stop this sort of accusation culture of, of and any suggestion that the media are enemies. Some may be, okay? Again, again, the media is big and plural, but the overwhelming and, and mainstream media that is constantly under attack is not. As flawed as it is, as troubled as it is, as unfair and unbalanced as it sometimes is, it's certainly not an enemy of, of the American people. I asked everybody in my book what their favorite question was, just because. And Colin Powell's favorite question was, how you doing? I said, really? Why is that? He said, I'm a general. I have people's lives in my hands. I need to know how they're doing. I thought it was a lovely response. So even after asking everybody about what their favorite question was, I wasn't quite prepared for when somebody asked me, so Frank, what's your favorite question? <laughs> But I, I've thought about it now, and in the, in the backdrop of this, this conversation, my favorite question now is, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know what you think is right is really right? How do you know the information or the sources you get or where they are? How do you know you feel the way you feel? Can you be more aware of any or all of these things? <coughs> Questions are sort of like air. They're all around us and we don't think about them much at all. We take them for granted until something goes wrong. And so what I hope this book can do is make people think a little bit more deliberately about it, engage a little bit more consciously with one another in themselves, be, be more ambitious in the questions they ask, be more caring and empathetic in the outcomes they've got, and connect outcome to question to listening. So with that, I would Thank you all very much, and I'd be delighted to take some questions.